Hello everyone, myself Dr. Angit Khandelwal, your anatomy educator. Today we are going to start with a session on the topic that is the upper limb. Let us see this topic. Upper limb, these are all the topics of the upper limb which we are going to cover. As you can see osteology from uh, osteology to pectoral region, mammary gland up till the hand and the joint. In this particular session we are going to touch on the osteology, the pectoral region and the mammary gland part and subsequently in the sessions we will continue with all of them. Now remember in this particular uh, sessions we are going to cover the concept of the topics, their images and in the end we will discuss the clinical MCQs or clinical regnants about these topics. So, let us start with the first topic that is our osteology. Just a second. Okay. So, let us start with the osteology, introduction and the osteology part. So, introduction about the upper limb. Upper limb, we all should be knowing that what is the upper limb meant for? Upper limb are actually the appendages. These are simply, they are the appendages from the body. What does that mean? That means that upper limb is very important for doing day-to-day -day activities like you are seeing I am writing on the screen with the help of the upper limb. So, upper limb are important for life, important for living, but they are not essential. Meaning by if someone has no upper limb, he still can live. So, they are important but not essential important right so basic function of upper limb is movement to do any work in day to day activity that is the role of upper limb okay <clears throat> so let us see now and uh, what are the important things that we are going to learn in the upper limb first of all obviously all the part of anatomy but why we need to know the upper limb is because the upper limb gets injured upper limb and lower limb these are the two parts of the body which are getting injured so there are a lot of fractures a lot of muscle injuries nerve injuries arterial injuries about and also the joints. So, these are the main things that we are going to discuss in the upper limb. Let us start the first topic that is the osteology. So, here we are seeing the whole bony architecture of the upper limb. We are seeing all the bones over here. Now, remember very important that as it is an appendage from the body, the skeleton of the upper limb is known as the appendicular skeleton. It is known as the appendicular skeleton. If we come to the basics of the anatomy uh, about the general basics, then uh, you may be remembering that this skeleton is basically of two types. One is the axial, one is the appendicular skeleton. So, if I talk the basics of the skeleton, there is an axial skeleton about the main axis of the body. This is the axial skeleton and then there is an appendicular skeleton about the appendages. Appendicular skeleton. Appendicular skeleton basically is for the upper limb bones and for the lower limb bones. Here we are discussing the upper limb particularly right now. So, if you see over here, these are all the upper limb appendicular skeleton. Now, there is a common confusion that sir, what about the scapula and the clavicle? Are these, uh, these are a part of shoulder girdle, but are these in the appendicular or the axial skeleton? So, do remember that clavicle and the scapula, these are both parts of upper limb, so they are a part of appendicular skeleton. So, in this comes our clavicle and scapula, clavicle and scapula. The rest of all the bones we must be knowing, all these are the bones, they come under the appendicular skeleton only. So, just giving you the names of the bones, clavicle, scapula, clavicle in front, scapula in the back, part of shoulder girdle, then the humerus bone, a part of the arm, arm is from shoulder joint to the elbow joint, the bone over there is the humerus, then from uh, the elbow to the wrist joint, this part that is the forearm, we have the radius and the ulna, the radius lies outside, ulna lies inside, radius is the lateral bone, ulna is the middle bone, then we have the carpals, in an adult we have 8 carpals, then we have the 5 metacarpals, and we have the 12 plus 2, 14 phalanges. So, there are these bones in the upper limb. If you count the number of bones, then there are around 32 bones in each upper limb. So, if someone asks you that, what is the total count of bones in the whole upper limb? There are 64 bones in the whole upper limb, 32 on the right side, 32 on the left side, right? Total number of bones in adult upper limb is 64, 32 on each upper limb, right? So, these are the various bones. Now, let us see the details of each bones. Uh, the important parts of each bones. Let us start. Remember, when we are doing any upper limb or lower limb, we go from proximal to distal. So, we will start with the bones and the anatomy of the proximal region that is around the shoulder or the pectoral or the scapular region and slowly, slowly we will go to the arm, forearm and the hand region. This is how we are going to proceed. So, let us start the first bone that is a clavicle over here. The bone over here is the clavicle. Clavicle, there are many important points in the clavicle. Remember, few important points in the clavicle is that this is the horizontal bone. It is a long bone, but that is lying horizontal, a speciality of it. So, let me write some important features of the clavicle. The important features of the clavicle, which you should be knowing. See, all the long bones in our body, basically these are parts of the limb bones only. 
they are vertically aligned. If you look at the low limb and the upper limb, it is, this is a normal anatomical position. So the bones are vertically aligned, the long bones. But this clavicle, it is a long bone which is lying horizontally, which is lying where? Lying horizontally. It is lying horizontally, right? The other part of the clavicle is, you can feel the whole clavicle. It is subcutaneous throughout. It is subcutaneous throughout, right? It ossifies in membrane. There is a membrane ossification. Now, there are two types of ossification that will be covering in the general anatomy part about the bones and the joints. So, it has a membranous ossification, membranous ossification. Uh, one of the rare uh, bones which is pierced by a nerve. So, nerve over here which is piercing into the supraclavicular nerves. The supraclavicular nerves, they will pierce. They will pierce this clavicle. So, clavicle is a long bone lying horizontally. It is throughout subcutaneous. It is a membranous ossification. It is pierced by supraclavicular nerves. These are some of the, the other things also. Like they have two primary center of ossification. So, there are two primary centers of ossification and other things over here. So now let's look at the clavicle again. Now clavicle as you can see it's a right clavicle. This is a superior view that's an inferior view. Right now see peculiarities of clavicle. You all can feel the clavicle. It has two ends. One on the medial and medial side and the lateral side. The architecture, the design of the two ends is different. The lateral end over here is flat. Is flat. And it joins with the bone of the known as acromion process of the scapula. It will form the joint acromioclavicular joint, literally. Acromion is of the scapula. As you go medially, it has a sinus curve. There is a shaft of the bone. It has a sinus curve. Sinus curve in the mean in the meaning by that this is the anterior part, that is the posterior part. If you look at this particular superior view of the right, scal right clavicle. So literally you are seeing that this bone is concave anteriorly. And as you go medially, this bone is convex anteriorly. You can feel the bone. This bone is more projected medially and as you go laterally, this bone is going more posteriorly, right? So, this is the shaft. Then as you go medially, this is the sternal end or the medial end of the clavicle. The lateral end was flat. The medial end is rounded. The medial end is rounded and it articulates with the sternum forming the sternoclavicular joint. This whole bone is subcutaneous. This is a superior view. This is the inferior view. That is the inferior view. But there are various muscles attached over here, various muscles attached over here. Just to name a few important ones, the deltoid, the trapezius, the P major, we will see all these muscles. From upwards, there is a sternocleidomastoid which is coming. Below, there is a subclavius muscle for which you have a groove, subclavian groove over here in the inferior surface. So, this is a long bone lying horizontally and a lot of muscles attached over here, right? So that is a clavicle bone for you. Now, clavicle as you saw that the middle end is rounded. The middle end is rounded and the lateral end is flat. So, somewhere in the middle, the shaft, the roundness of the bone is changing to flatness or you can say flatness is becoming round as you go from lateral to middle or middle to lateral. So, there is some difference or change in the shape of the whole bone. So Therefore, when there is any fracture to this bone, which is one of the most common fractures of the upper limb, the fracture of clavicle, then this bone gets broken up somewhere in the lateral part of the bone. Normally, the earlier we used to divide the clavicle into medial one third, the middle one third and the lateral one third. And it was said that it is around the middle and the lateral one third, this point, where the fracture of the clavicle is most commonly found. But I will see, it is around the lateral half where the fracture can be into the clavicle. Right, now this is the bone over here and if we come back to this image for once a while, let us see, the, this was the clavicle, this is the clavicle. The other thing that comes to our mind that why is there a clavicle? Clavicle, the reason is, see, as you can see from here, the whole upper limb is hanging through the clavicle. Through the ligaments below the clavicle, the whole upper limb is hanging. So, point number one, use of clavicle. It hangs the whole upper limb. Point number two, it helps in the attachment of the muscles. You can see a lot of muscles, I told you, P major, deltoid, trapezius, sternocleidomastoid, so a lot of muscles are attached over here. The third thing about clavicle is, it gives the upper limb more freedom of movement, meaning by the upper limb, the shoulder joint is more laterally. So, it can freely move against the body. Body does not hinder its movement. So, this clavicle helps in that also. So, it is a very important bone. And the fourth point which you can remember is that the whole weight of the upper limb, whole weight of the upper limb is transmitted to the body by the clavicle only. 
why sir why not a scapula i can see the scapula from behind posterior view this is the anterior view that's a posterior view a scapula is attached to humerus fine but a scapula is not attached to any of the axillary skeleton bones how will the weight from upper limb to scapula go to the axillary skeleton it has to go by clavicle clavicle is the only route by which the whole body weight or the whole uh, upper limb weight has to go to the body therefore if there is any injury or any undue pressure on there is a fall on the ground by the hand clavicle is a bone that can be easily fractured it is one of the most common bones to be fractured right so that is a clinical feature of the clavicle you should know the importance of clavicle and why the fractures are so common here in the next slide we are seeing the fracture of the clavicle you can see over here the this is an x ray and some names are given the h is for the humerus the ac is for the acromion process the cp is for the coracoid process but what is more important is the clavicle over here and you can see the fracture of clavicle i told you the mode of injury the lateral part of the bone is going down and the medial part of the bone is going up you can see the arrows over here the lateral part is going down the medial part is going up medial end of the bone is going up let us see the reasons also why is this happening so whenever there is a fracture of the clavicle how will the patient come to you patient will be holding the upper limb because now the weight is not getting transmitted because it was the clavicle which was earlier transmitting the whole weight now the weight is not getting transmitted the patient will come to you by holding the upper limb like this and if you examine or you take an x ray you see the lateral part of the bone fractured bone is going down and the medial part of the bone is going up the reason for this is that the weight of the upper limb is now through the lateral part therefore the gravity is pulling the lateral part of the bone down the medial part you have the sternocleidomastoid which will be pulling the bone up 